Yo, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex Lee here again as usual. Thank you for dropping by. If you guys hear that my voice is gonna sound a little raspy today, a little deep, I'm not sure what's going on, but it is what it is. Probably either allergies or sick. Most likely sick again. If you've seen my previous video, you might have gathered how excited I was about the uh, the feature available on this board, which allows you to train your chess engine. And so in direct response, so to speak, to my previous video, the company has created a feature where you can take a specific account from Lee Chess and basically upload the games from that account and create a chess engine. And I do realize that some people might be more interested in other ways of importing games, whether manually or from other chess sources. We're not so much going to be concerned today about where we're getting our games, what the source is, but rather how the process takes place and what the final result is. The more important question that some of you guys might have is not necessarily how the process takes place, but rather how accurate will the chess engine be as a representation of that particular person's playing style. If I took that person and set them side by side and I had two chess boards and I played the same game myself, how accurately will the chess engine sort of copy the moves of that individual and how likely that individual, if he was sitting right next to me, would agree that the chess engine is making the same moves that he would otherwise make. So that those are really all very important questions. Alrighty, my friends. So let me go ahead and share with you guys how this chess engine training process should take place. So from the main screen here that you see, we're going to go ahead and click on this chess engine option. We'll go to the training here and um, we'll click this button to start up new training. And now that Chestnut has done the update, we see that we have this extra option that I we didn't have before in my previous video. You click on the lead chess and here it allows you to input the name of the player that you want to pull the games from. As I've shown you guys in my previous video, we're going to go ahead and utilize my friend's account, Krakia, and we'll click here. This little window here will go ahead and populate the games that he had. It does take a moment here for the games to be pulled. Once Chestnut has uploaded his games, we can see that we have a pretty large number of games here. In fact, on his profile, we have 187 games. And we'll just go ahead and start uh, selecting the games. Now, you don't necessarily need to select each and every one of them. And I'll tell you guys in a second why that's important to consider but once you've selected at least 20 games you have the button that'll change and say start to train and the maximum at this time that I've noted is you can upload upload as many as 200 games um, but minimum of 20 then you click this and it will start training I'm already currently training this same scenario and I'll show you guys here in a second so if you go back if you click the train this will start and says your training is in progress if you go back to the training history over here, we will see all the different chess engines that I've been training. Um, the training process does take some time, anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes all the way to a couple of hours because the more data that you are giving this chess engine, the more complex it becomes and it basically it has to test all the games against each other. It says here the data you uploaded has been randomly split into 80% for training set and 20% for testing. I'm assuming it's basically what it's doing is it's training and testing at the same time, testing the new training engine basically against itself. Since the opening moves are highly random, we will ignore the data from the first 10 moves or the first five turns. Right now, I believe that it's more concerned with uh, the response uh, pattern of that particular individual to moves other than the opening moves. Since opening moves are a lot of times are kind of similar between chess players. We can go back to the history of all the different chess engines that I've trained within the past couple of days. Here is the Dennis report, the same uh, profile, but I utilized 187 games, all the games that he had in here to create this. We have uh, an, a model accuracy. This is the accuracy of the test set, which represents the true accuracy of the model. The accuracy of the users playing chess with this model is also expected to be close to this value. We recommend that this value be higher than 50%. If this value is too low, it is possible that the data is insufficient. Please increase the quantity of uploading data. Now, as of now, like I said, you can only upload a maximum of 200 games. But the thing about it is you want to be selective at which games you upload because let's say that somebody's playing this particular game and they're at top notch, they're really trying. 
that's one. But then the next game that he might have played, he it, it might have not been his day or he just made a, a lot of blunders. And the accuracy of this game compared to this game may not be the same. If I wanted to be a little more selective and a little bit more accurate, I would and increase this accuracy. You'd want to take games that are not like complete throwaways. Uh, you'd want to take games that were played in this kind of similar manner. It's also important to consider that if you're pulling games from a particular profile, if that person plays different types of games like classical versus rapid versus blitz versus bullet, you can't take bullet games and classical games and assume you're going to get the same accuracy. Once they take all the games, uh, all the greens were his responses that actually fit the model overall. Whereas like the red responses here were the responses that were different from the rest of the responses. It's also very important in my opinion if you're taking somebody's um, somebody's account for for instance like in this case. My friend Dennis he, he's played games for a while and he's played games over a, a span of several years. So his accuracy was changing and his uh, playing style and his skill were, were varying between the times when he was playing. So it may not necessarily create um, a model of extremely high accuracy if your playing styles are different. If you're playing today and you're playing one way, but then in half a year you've increased in, in your uh, overall playing strength. Uh, maybe you were playing somewhere else like chess.com. You come back to Lee Chess and you're playing games that are a slightly different level with different considerations then including those games with the previous games may not necessarily create the most accurate model. I took 200 games from Lee Chess from my account and I created um, created a model here. Similarly, we see that it's a 56.76% accuracy and uh, model fitting was 63%. This is the accuracy of the training set which represents the degree of model fitting. We recommend this value to be around 95%. So we're definitely lower than 95%. If this value is too low, it is possible that the data is not from the same user. Please check the uploaded data. <clears throat> not from the same user or user is playing differently. So that's another sort of thing to pay attention to. The data effectiveness. This is the percentage of the test set that differs from the training set. Uh, which represents the effectiveness of the test set. We recommend this value to be around 95 plus minus 5%. If this value is too low, it is possible that there are too many repeated data points. Please check the uploaded data and increase the diversity of the data. So because we're uploading so many games, the diversity here is not a problem, but we could stand to create a model of higher accuracy or higher fitting degree. I also pulled the data for my friend Larry, kind of a very similar thing. Now, my friend Larry was playing on Lee Chess primarily Blitz and Bullet games. So I took all his Bullet games and his Blitz games and put them into this software. And we're still getting about 52% here um, and 59% for the fitting, fitting degree. Now that you know how this process works, let's focus on the more important question. And that is how accurately do these chess engines actually represent those people's playing style. Now, Dennis's chess engine, that was the very first one that I made and playing against the chess engine. I know I don't play against Dennis that much, uh, that often anymore, like he just doesn't wanna play. I realized what was that made him so much stronger chess player than I am. It's just because he, the way that he played, he calculated all his moves from a very positional standpoint. He didn't necessarily care about tactical advantages or tactical maneuvering. I was more of one of those people that just wanted to find a way to exchange some pieces and take that extra pawn if I could or find a way to uh, hopefully gain some kind of a, a, an advantage towards the end. He was different in that he basically moved, moved his pieces positionally. He was a very strong positional player. He was always work, working on the defensive. In fact, he was one of those people who really didn't like to exchange pieces, especially in the beginning, but rather sort of put his pieces in a position where I remember what made it difficult for me to play against him is that because he would literally, he would calculate, he would say, okay, if I move this pawn forward here, I that pawn would do this and that. And therefore I put a value of so-and-so on that particular move. But if I say that I put the bishop here in this spot, 
that value would increase because that bishop would serve, you know, uh, a little bit of a better, more advantageous at the spot. Even without having a clear plan, he would basically position his pieces in such a way that kind of more towards the middle of the game, I would often realize that although we haven't really exchanged any pieces, like I, I don't have anywhere to go. Like everything's sort of locked in. My pieces are locked in. I can't, I can't maneuver really well around. And then after that, he would slowly find a way to like take one of my pawns. And then eventually, as we would liquidate the pieces towards the very end, he would end up winning because I would be lacking one pawn somewhere. But that's why he was always a better player than I am because he took more time to think, which is important in chess, but also because our playing styles were so different. And if I could not see a tactical advantage somewhere in the beginning of the game or like middle of the game, I would be at a disadvantage. Whereas he would not necessarily care about that and he would just move his pieces to a better position. So when I created the chess engine for Dennis, the surprising part is that I actually uh, started playing against the chess engine and I got to the same situation uh, probably about 10 or 12 moves ahead into the game. I realized that it, it, that chess engine was playing positionally. It was doing the same stuff that Dennis was doing, essentially um, reluctant to take pieces, reluctant to exchange, um, unless a clear advantage is present. Like putting pieces basically in such a way that it would kind of immobilize me. And then midway through the game, even though no pieces were exchanged yet, material-wise sort of equal, I started to recognize that I'm being kind of sort of ensnared. I'm, I'm being immobilized. It was just kind of like... And I thought to myself, what's going on? But at the same time, I remembered specifically what made Dennis like so uh, difficult to play against. Um, and yeah, I, I lost that game, but it, it, it was really cool to see that. I took his games and even though um, the, the model fitting accuracy wasn't as high as like what they recommend, like 95% or something like that. It was still really cool to see because the playing style was very similar. It was these like non-aggressive games that were, were just like difficult, very difficult. Now, I have created my own chess engine from data that I've imported from Lee Chess and it was accurate. Um, it was accurate the way that I like to play. I like to have open games. I like to have exchanging of the pieces. I also like to tactical advantages if I see that there might be some kind of a sort of a maneuvering that can take place or a couple of pieces would be exchanged and maybe I'll take an extra pawn or at least put myself in a slightly better position after the exchange, I will definitely take the exchange instead of instead of waiting around, instead of being on the defensive, very sort of quick to exchange pieces, very, it may not be the best playing style, but I saw myself in my own chess engine, which was really cool. I beat my own self in the chess engine then I uploaded uh, my friend Larry. Now my friend Larry primarily fo focuses on playing blitz and bullet games. So I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna go ahead and upload those blitz and bullet games. But at the same time, I thought, well, people who play blitz games, they don't have as much time to think about their moves as those who are playing classical games. So I, so I, I thought to myself, this is gonna be clearly a weaker chess engine, one that is hopefully going to be something that still will represent his playing style, but it's maybe not gonna be as deep. Um, it was still pretty strong. Larry and I play chess games eh, once a month or so. He's always a little bit stronger than me, even though most of the time he spends playing bullet and blitz games, um, he's still stronger. And I don't mind that, and I created his chess engine and I felt like his playing style is, he's sort of in between positional and tactical, more positional than tactical. And uh, he likes to, about middle of the game, to start really putting the emphasis and value on pawns. So he will see where there might be an advantage and start pushing those pawns. So long story short, I feel impressed with the chess engine software. I feel like it represents the playing style of that individual pretty well. Now, one thing that I do have to say, as I've mentioned before in this video, um, it is important that when you're collecting data to create a chess engine that not only do you get enough games in there, and like I said, at this time, the minimum games you need to upload is 20, but 
200 being the maximum. I really wish we could upload like a thousand, but 200 seems like a sufficient amount of games. But if you're uploading a lot of different outliers, meaning games that were kind of throwaways, they may skew your data. In the same way, for example, um, whenever I, I do some videos of chess sets and stuff, I will actually take my camera and I'll kind of do a very slow pan of the pieces. If at the very end uh, of, of my pan, I kind of shake the camera a little bit, and then in my editing software, I want to put in like a smoothing filter, then I have to cut the part out that has the shake. If I include the part that has the shake with the panning and then put the filter over the whole thing, the shake is what you would consider an outlier. And the outlier is going to create the entire video after the smoothing effect is placed where something will feel off. Now, if I take out the shakiness, if I cut it out and just create the pan and then put the smoothing filter on, I'll get a lot more smoothing and more successful experience. Same goes with chess games. You know, if you have some outliers, there are some days when I just don't feel good and I might like throw away queen and everything and just completely bomb my games. I do not necessarily want to take those games and have them be part of that chess engine. Although the chess engine, if it has enough games, will figure out on its own whether some games were throwaways or not. It almost makes sense if you want to create a chess engine to have the games on a particular profile being specifically pay played for that purpose. Meaning, if I wanted to create the most representative chess engine of my own playing style, I would have to start uh, playing the games in the same exact way, under the same exact conditions, in a relatively short interval of time. Because today, if I'm explaining the chess games, I might be of a certain chess skill level. Whereas if I continue at the same pace, uh, a month from now, may maybe not, not in a month from now, but a year from now, I'll be at a different chess level. If I take all the games combined from where I was maybe more novice in chess to maybe where I was a little bit more stronger, it'll give me the average. But once again, it'll be, that's why where when you see the chess bots for like Magnus, you see that it there will be a bot for Magnus when he was a certain age. Then there will be a different bot when he was a little bit older, a different bot for when he was a little bit older because his playing styles have evolved and changed. And so you can't just take, take the average of Magnus and give you, you know, this generalized result. You have to take the games from a certain period. So I think the, the more that this software itself is going to be sort of developed and polished, the more interesting discoveries we're all going to be able to see with this. But I feel like this particular feature is evolutionary in a sense because it it has taken chess in a new direction. I think that these type of improvements that we're seeing with this new technology is very promising and very interesting at the same time. Let me know what you think about this chess training engine. If you've trained utilizing other programs, hit a like, make sure to comment and um, everybody stay safe uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay.